day. What a blessing that was to all of us. How wonderful for so many of us to show up. And I know that he's been in our Bible study class and the last few times he went to church, this is where he came, Heritage Bible Church. So happy to have him. As the people stood up and talked about Benny, there was a pattern all the way through what the ministers told us and what the people that spoke about told us. If you remember, they said he was a highly successful person, worked for Texas Instrument and then Motorola, had several successful careers, made a lot of money, and uh, studied for the ministry. And he'd always be a mentor to those who went into the ministry. And the last thing he would say to them, just as they were being dedicated or brought into the church, is there, was all, there are a lot of things to read, and there will be a lot of people tell you what you should and shouldn't do. You'll get all kinds of advice. You'll have the good folks of the church many times tell you, you need to do this, 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 and this. And he said, I just want you to know, you live for an audience of one. Have a relationship with God and do what God tells you to do. And they said that throughout the whole service, and I thought that was a beautiful answer. So here's to Benny, everyone. And I also want to remind you, you know, Jim uh, Bowman has been move is moving over to Acacia after Miriam died. And also, um, Art Hammond passed away. So we need to remember the widows, those of the congregation, their lives go on, and we're here to support them. Remember, they're part of the family. All right. Kelly, will you please lead us in our first hymn? <laughs>
Thank you, Kelly. Let's now have the hymn, I Love to Tell the Story. This morning, I think, was the record. This was the hottest I ever felt that garage. So nice to see all of you here, though. A few weeks ago, while visiting family in Honolulu, I attended the chapel service for my great-granddaughter Jade's uh, kindergarten class, 150 little people with bright, shining faces. As we walked into the chapel, the pianist was playing, Jesus Loves Me This I Know, for the Bible tells me so. The song resonated with me as those words have been in my head since I started coming to Heritage Bible Church. It was my first introduction to Jesus that I can remember many, many years ago, probably when I attended Sunday school, probably as a, a kindergartner, at the Meridian Heights Presbyterian Church in Indianapolis. From learning that song so many years ago, I have always felt the love of Jesus, his arms embracing me, comforting me, always there for me. I pray that Jade and her classmates will have that same lifetime experience. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, this has been an especially sad week for us at Sagewood. We have lost three of our residents, Marion Bowman, Art Hammond, and Benny Smotherman, but we know they are in your loving arms. Please help us to reach out to their families and to be there for them in this time of sorrow. And please help us to guide and nurture the young people in our lives that they will always know the unconditional love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. The offering team, please take their places. 
And Kelly, will you lead us in a offering him? please.
Good morning, everybody. Enjoying the weather? A little sweaty today, right? A little humid, right? I, uh, I, I, last week we had a picture of Christ overlooking Jerusalem. This week I thought, well, let's see if they can pull something off the internet about maybe a, a portrait of Paul praying in prison. And as we unite our hearts, I thought that might be a good point of reflection together as we pray. Father, thank you for this morning. And Lord, our hearts go out to the families who said farewell to their loved ones this week. To each and every one, Lord, we ask that you would wrap your arms around them. That we would be the presence of Christ to them. Whether it's a hug or, or a kind word or a note or some other way to express the love of Christ. Lord, we remember the Hammy family. We also remember Benny and his family and Betty. Watch over that family. May his testimony long live far after, Lord, the day that he went home to be with you. For the wonderful celebration of service yesterday for his life, we thank you for that. And Lord, also for Marion. Lord, be with James. Lord, may the Spirit of God encourage him today. Be with the family as they're preparing for the details of the service. And Lord, for us, we've been awakened to the fact of our own mortality this week. But Lord, it's also a time to reflect on the hope we have. Just as a song we sung, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as a sun, we've no less days, time will be no more, and we will be safe in the arms of Jesus. That is our living hope because he defeated death and the sting of death. And we have a wonderful hope. It's Easter Sunday every day for us. And we celebrate your resurrection today. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, what's so amazing about grace? Bill, you want to get up and say a few words? <laughs> He's a man of many words, isn't he, Grace? <laughs> well, what is so amazing about Grace? The book that was written several years ago titled That's Very, Very Thing. But when you think about it, when you think about what Grace means to each and every one of us as believers in Christ, Grace is an amazing thing. It is a powerful thing. And today, as we mentioned in our prayer, and it's been mentioned by Jill and others, we have definitely come across a situation this week where we're reminded of our own mortality. And not only the three that were mentioned, but I mentioned last week, Dr. Wirtz, uh, Wirtz that was in uh, Acacia, uh, he passed away. And um, so that's four in about 10 days. And it's times like this that we're conflicted because on one hand, we're going to miss somebody very, very much. We love them. We appreciate it being around them and what they did for us and what we were able to do for them in our friendships. And then the other times we remember something that Benny said or maybe Dr. Ward said or someone else said and a smile comes across our face. And so we get kind of conflicted. We're not sure how to feel. We're not sure how to work this thing through. What I want to do today is I want to sum up the book of Philippians a little bit, and then I'm going to share with us a, a message that God has specifically for this time. Talk about perfect timing. Paul is saying farewell to the Philippians. And he is wrapping it all up. And the major theme of Philippians, just to review a little bit, is that we will express joy in our lives. That makes us different. We will express joy in our lives when we realize that Christ is in control and in total care of our lives. When we grasp that, when we figure that out, when we let that 
settle in our hearts, joy erupts. It's almost impossible not to have joy when you realize that Christ is in complete control of every detail of my life, including the things I don't like, <laughs> including the things that kind of rub off the sharp edges off of Fredericks, those, those great things that happen in our lives. God is still in control of that. In fact, he designed it to rub that rough edge off of me. And that's why we have this community called Heritage Bible Church. So we've got the theme that the joy of the Lord happens when we experience and understand that Christ is in control and in total care of my life. And in the review of the chapters, chapter 1, we find that there's joy in living. Paul says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Chapter 2, we find that there's joy in serving. And remember, Paul said, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Chapter 3, he says, I press on towards the goal, which leads us to believe that there's joy, there's joy in giving. There's joy, I'm sorry, joy in our calling. God calls us to be part of the body. And so there's joy in that. In chapter 4, as we'll find out in just a minute, there's joy in resting. God wants us to be at rest. That doesn't mean in a hammock and just kicking back. What it means, though, is our souls are at rest. Our spirit's at rest. Because God's always in control. And he wants that to nestle down right here so we can rest in our relationship with Christ and realize that he has everything under control. And so today, the big idea, really, is that farewells are never final. They're never final when we're resting in God's grace. Farewells are never final when we're resting in God's grace. While some people may gloss over it, you know, it's kind of interesting. You can always tell when commentary writers get tired. Because they get to the end of the book and they go, oh yeah, and then Paul signs off and says goodbye. And that's all they write about this. But these four verses are packed with great truths that are going to encourage your heart today. They've encouraged my heart all week. And so that's why we're studying it. The final words of Paul are a lot like anybody else. Uh, to use an adage, last words are lasting words, aren't they? Last words are lasting words. <coughs> Let me give you an example. I did a memorial service yesterday afternoon, um, so I was kind of tied between, should I, I was trying to go to Benny's, but I had this other commitment. And so I'm doing this memorial, and the person that we're doing the celebration of life for, um, her you know what her last words were? Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so at the end of the service, we were all done praying. I said, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. And uh, you know, that, no one's going to forget that. Anybody that was in attendance at that service will remember it. And same thing's true with Paul's last words here. The, um, the, thing about last, the thing about farewells is that sometimes we think that they're goodbye forever. But Paul points out three things today. And the first thing is, is that when we rest in God's grace, farewells reset our focus. He says in verse 20, Now to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul breaks out in 